So I've always enjoyed motorcycles uh, from, I guess it started out as me just enjoying riding. And that's really, it's funny to me because now that I do all the customizing, I'll have people come up to me and say, uh, that's, that's cool what work you're doing. Do you ride motorcycles too? <laughs> it's like a common question and it, it always makes me laugh. Uh, and then when I say yes, they go, oh, wow. <laughs> As if it's like, I don't know if it's the, the risk of riding a motorcycle, but um, anyway, I, it always comes down, uh, first, and foremost, first and foremost, it was always about riding bikes for me. Motobricks kind of grew organically from, from day one. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to turn it into. I think I just was consumed with the idea of building these bikes and um, wanted to push my skill level and see how, how far I could go. I really had the, the vision of uh, doing my own metal work from not knowing how to weld to learning how to TIG weld eventually and wanting to do more metal shaping as well, which is still something I, I want to get into. But um, I think I, it's sort of, it's been, a, it's been a long journey. I started off in a small garage. I've shared the space with a, a lot of different people. I've had, <laughs> you know, friends come and go and sort of, it's been quite the experience of, um, I don't know, I feel like there's all sorts of cliches about this kind of thing. Like, um, you know, about the hard road, I don't know exactly what. So my inspiration for my style, I guess you could say, it really started from that SV650 that I, that I first had. And I think I saw and I noticed people were doing a lot of work on uh, vintage Hondas and things like that. But I, I knew sport bikes, that's what I knew. So I knew uh, Ninjas and, and the SV650. So from there, I sort of, I liked the idea of the vintage bikes, but I still always felt like the modern stuff performed so much better. And that was just what I was used to. So right away, I think my style came about from trying to make vintage bikes more modern. And I mean, people were doing that. There was a lot of inspiration that I, that's, that was sort of, yeah, already I would say what was out there, but um, yeah, I definitely wanted to mix the modern with, with vintage. And so that's why I wanted to do inverted forks and different things like that. That eventually changed and turned into, I, I stopped doing the inverted forks. I, I just focused on, I, I guess my style sort of grew out of that and it turned into its own thing. I think with the last couple bikes that I did, I, I gained the confidence to say, okay, I can uh, submit these bikes to different shows and I wanna see what's gonna happen out of that. And then as I've gone to the different shows, that's really sort of grown, grown the brand as well. But I've always stayed sort of true to just being sort of, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a pretty humble guy. I don't necessarily, uh, I've never really pushed the brand as much and I, and I still want to push my skill level. I always want to, that, that sort of comes first for me. It was never easy. Um, I've had times where I just felt like quitting, felt like I've gone against the grain at every stage of the game where I felt like uh, not, not having a day job other than doing this. It just felt like everyone who I talked to would say that's the stupidest thing you could ever do. Uh, what's wrong with you? Um, and it was just, I, I sort of got numb to it after a while. So I knew that I, I've always had maybe like an internal compass that said, okay, keep going. I think one of the things about Motobricks that sort of, or I guess about me, Brian, uh, that makes me stand out um, is I, I think when I, as when I started getting into bikes, I focused on the metal work and that's what I wanted to do. I really, I really recognize that if I'm going to create a cafe racer, actually what I need to do is I need to have really good welding skill. And, um, I guess I had a good knack for some electrical, like for, for wiring and, and that kind of thing. Uh, my engineering background helped with a lot of that. Even the, the little things start to become difficult if you don't have, 
If you don't have a good metal working skill or even basic sort of, I shouldn't say basic, but I guess uh, certain tools available to you and the ability to, to use them, um, uh, it makes the, the job that much more difficult. And at, at least that was for me. I, I never found there to be difficulty in the artistic side of it. Um, but I think that's, that's what separates me. I, I recognize that if I'm gonna be modifying bikes, then I gotta be a, I've gotta be a metal worker. That's gotta be my thing. So, and I've really gone with that. And that's taken me to all sorts of other jobs and that's taken me to today where I have my own metal shop and I actually do a lot of furniture work. I do a lot of um, just custom metal work in general. I think the whole cafe racer scene has really, it's been around for, I guess it's been around forever. It's been around for a long time. I didn't get into it until maybe 10 years ago and to, like probably around 2010, 2011, that's really when I became aware of what was going on. I think it was starting to pick up steam and people were starting to modify Honda's CBs and that kind of thing, and I started noticing that. Um, but I think it's, it's sort of grown into, I, I think in Toronto specifically, I've, I've noticed that, yeah, a lot more people are getting interested in it. It used to be that in the motorcycle scene, it, it was just sport bikes. I, I would see the odd, a uh, small Honda, maybe like a CB350, that had been very mildly customized. And over the last few years, I, I noticed as I got more involved in the community, I mean, it's, it's something that if you have any inclination to be creative and to, uh, to try to learn some of these technical sort of skills, um, I think if you have any inclination to do that, then, then it's intoxicating to get involved in the, in the cafe racer scene. I think it's just a natural thing that it's very attractive to anyone with that kind of mind. So what's next for Motorbricks? I see, I see myself getting more and more into um, more complicated and more interesting Forms, I guess you could say. I'm really, I'm really excited, and I've always been excited since I started this to push the boundaries of what I can build. So I don't want to do cookie cutter stuff. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. Um, it's getting harder and harder to do that because some of my inspiration, some of the top builders in the U.S. I think every time I think I'm gaining a skill, I see what they're coming up with, and it's, it's just, it sort of blows my mind. Uh, I'd love to get to that level. I'd love to keep pushing what I can do. And I, I think I already do surprise myself with what I can come up with. One of my worries, that one of my fears is that I don't have time because I'm, I'm building too many railings or I'm building too many tables that I don't have time to fix my, you know, or turn, turn the next project. You know, I've got like five or six bikes on the back burner at any given time. And uh, I'm looking for people who want me to do something with it. It's not always easy to find that. I sometimes have to just decide and put a budget aside to say, okay, I'm, I'm building what I want. Yeah, so you can find me, I'm on Instagram at, uh, at Motobricks. I, I have a website, that's usually people find me through there. Uh, uh, no big plans for events right now, I think, obviously given COVID right now, um, but but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be part of the Toronto motorcycle uh, community. I've, I've been that for the past few years and um, I'm happy to do metal work for people. So yeah, uh, you can find me in Scarborough. Um, look me up on my Instagram and that's, that's pretty much the best way to find me.